All right, today we're going to talk about the Euclidean algorithm, which I've been alluding to in a few videos, but in case you forgot, or I should introduce it for the first time, if we have A is equal to B times Q plus R, I used D before, now I'm going to use B, then the GCD of A and B is going to equal the GCD of B and R. I'll have a proof of this in the third slide. However, I want to illustrate the point in this slide right here. So we have the GCD of 2322 times six or and 654. So what this means here is we have A and B and we know that A is equal to B times Q plus R. So 2322 is equal to 654 times some number plus some number. So we start off with sort of estimating what's the highest number that can multiply by 654 without going over. And we can guess that that is going to be 3. And I think we can pretty safely see that it's 3 since 600 times 4 is 2400 which is greater and 600 times 3 is 1,800, which is a lot smaller. So 654 times 3 is safe. And if you multiply this out and subtract it from 2,322, you will get 360 as your remainder. I did the math ahead of time, so unfortunately I won't be doing the long, unnecessary arithmetic. So now, according to the algorithm, this means that this GCD is going to be the same thing as the GCD of 654 and 360. So 654 is equal to 360 times 1 because 2 times 360 is going to be 720 and then we get a remainder of 294 which means this is equivalent to the GCD of 360 and 294. So 360 is equal to 294 times 1 plus 66. So this is going to be the same thing as the GCD of 294 and 66, which is a little bit harder to calculate, but it's finally nice that we're going down by numbers that aren't just multiples of 1. So this will be 66 times 4, and the remainder will be 30. So when we keep going, this is now going to be the GCD of 66 and 30, which is obviously a little bit easier to calculate. So 66 is equal to 30 times 2 plus 6, which will be the GCD of 30 and 6, which should be really obvious that this is equal to 6. So, the greatest common divisor of 2,322 and 654 is 6. And that's crazy. We took two large numbers, and we found out the algorithm, the greatest common divisor, so quickly. In fact, you can see with a calculator and a computer, or even a programming language, this can be done extremely fast. Of course, if it's really crazy high numbers, it might be a little bit more difficult, but again, it's not really that bad. So that's the Euclidean algorithm. That's all there is to it. But what's a little bit more important, and you're probably saying, hold on a second, I don't understand why this works. And I will show you why it works in a very, I wouldn't say it's complicated, but probably a little bit more difficult of a proof than you would normally have. So. Here's the claim. If A is equal to BQ plus R, then the GCD of A and B is equal to the GCD of B and R. So, let's start with A is equal to BQ plus R. And we want to say that there is a common divisor, and we'll say that uh, this GCD is equal to D 
if and only if, I should make this a little bit more clear, the GCD of A and B is equal to D if and only if the GCD of B and R is equal to D. So let's start with our assumption. And we so say, okay, D divides A and D divides B. And this means that D is going to divide A minus Q times B. This is something that you should probably prove on your own that if, that if D divides A and D divides B, then D divides A minus some number times B. In fact, I think it should be, uh, you can probably do it in two steps. So for instance, you know from the videos we did, if D divides A and D divides B, then D divides A plus B, which you can easily see is the same thing as A minus B. And you should also be able to prove that if A, that if D divides C, then D divides C times A. In fact, I'm going to change that to if D divides A, then D divides C times A for some C. And with those two, you get that D divides A minus Q times B. So what's interesting about this is that if we take this formula, A is equal to BQ times R, or plus R, we can rewrite this as R is equal to A minus B times Q. So from this, if we just see that A minus B times Q is the same thing as A minus Q times B, we know that D divides R. So D is a common divisor of B and R. Okay, so we've proven one way. Since this is an if and only if statement, we have to go both ways. So let's say that, okay, well then D divides B and D divides R. So this means that D divides BQ plus R. Again, we just use the same thing in the box above to prove that, which means that D is going to divide A. So D is going to be a common divisor of A and B. So the GCD of A and B is going to be the greatest common divisor of B and R. So this is going to be our proof going to the left, and this is our proof going to the right. And there's the proof of the algorithm. Again, it's not, it's not too complicated. It might be a little bit difficult to sort of understand at first. In fact, there is an extended algorithm that goes so much further than this, but is not going to be covered in any detail in these lecture videos, perhaps in discrete math too, but as far as the first course. In fact, I would almost say that's more of an elementary number theory course where you talk about, well, I'll, I'll give you a little taste of it. If we have the GCD of A times B is equal to D, then you can write D as a times k plus b times j. So there's some combinations of numbers. In fact, this is normally given the numbers, I'll write them s and t. So a times s plus b times t is equal to the greatest common denominator of a times b. And this is the, well, it's, it's sort of a, uh, it's a corollary of it, of the Euclidean algorithm. And this would be in an elementary number theory course. So I highly suggest if you're interested in this to take an elementary number theory course or at least find videos. I may do this in the future if I so choose to study up a little bit and make videos on this. But that's a cool little result of it. And it's not it's not too hard to figure that out if you play around with the formulas a bit. In fact, if you're interested, there's good Wikipedia articles, and you could probably type this into Google and find some really neat proofs of this sort of thing. But that was number theory. This was pretty much, uh, by now, all the content that's covered in most first-year discrete math courses. But I think I'll st touch on finite state machines in a couple of videos. Well, for a couple of videos, just for fun, because that stuff is a lot of fun.
So if you have any questions, as always, just leave them in the comments below, and I will get to them as quickly as possible.